Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, we're having so many great conversations. We're in the middle of day two of a three-day conference here talking about data and AI innovation. Yeah, and I, I think again, when you think about it, there's a lot of data out there that really needs to be joined together with the AI and with the algorithms and to really provide value. Because again, it's about context and it's about also security and privacy and all of the things that give you guardrails as well, which I think we'll get into a little bit during indeed this conversation. Indeed we will, yeah. indeed we will. I'd like to welcome our next guest to this segment, both CUBE alumni, CUBE veterans really, <laughs> Neil, Med Neil Mendelson. VP of Data and AI at Oracle, thank you so much, you. Neil. And Rick Tam Daniels, GVP, Global Vice President of Tech Technology and Alliances at Informatica, thank you so much. Great to be Our here. Partner. You're, you're part well, yeah. let's start there, Neil. <laughs> uh, talk, us, talk us through this partnership um, and, and, and sort of the joint collaboration that goes on. Well, um, so a bit of a history. Right, so Informatica was one of our first partners way back in the day when Oracle began in the data warehousing business. So many of the customers that we acquired during those early years are still with us today, right? Both from an Informatica point of view and an Oracle point of view. And we're you know, delighted to be able to bring those customers you know, into the modern era, if you will, and give them the opportunity to take advantage of you know, not only AI, but machine learning and all the other things that are exciting. Yeah, yeah I, I think again, that to me is, it, it has been a long relationship. I mean, uh, having been a user of Informatica back in the, you know, probably early 2000s or mid 2000s, you start to look at how the relationship has just grown. And again, from a Informatica perspective, you're also part of Oracle Cloud now and you're being able to be more than just, hey, it's, it's where it started, which was on premise because there was no th such thing yep. as cloud even back in those days. Yep. So how has this evolved in what you see with, especially as we get towards Gen AI? Well, you know, one of the things that, from my perspective, makes Informatica a great partner is, I mean, you mentioned on-prem, right? We have a lot of data that's still on-prem, right? In fact, one would argue that a lot of the systems that run a business or a government are still on-prem, right? And many of those are still running Informatica and so forth. So, you know, we have that responsibility to try to take people forward. You know, you mentioned OCI, which, um, uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Most people don't realize Oracle has the cloud, but it, indeed we do. And, uh, but we're also excited to expand into Azure now. So, you know, for our customers that, you know, that are using combination of Oracle and other technologies and Informatica brings that all together in a multi-cloud world, but importantly, can also reach into on-prem, right? Because it's a transition, right? It's not, you just don't turn over, you know, you know overnight. Right. So, gives us yeah. that continuity. Yeah, and we, I mean, as Neil said, I think that's a very unique aspect of the partnership, is just the, the existing customer base, and I look at it as, you know, back in the, the early days of a previous generation of partnership, it was all about uh, helping customers succeed with their data and analytics, and really building a trusted, robust foundation. And we got together to figure out, well, what does this partnership look like in the cloud? That was a big piece of it, understanding what should the foundation look like in the cloud for modern analytics. And one thing we did very uniquely is we got together and said, look, instead of giving customers you know, dozens and dozens of choices and they have to figure out what they're doing, we're going to put our heads together and say, what is the right solution for customers to, to get to the end state? Uh, and the great thing is we've been now in the era of gener generative AI, we've been doing exactly the same thing, you know, building out those templates and roadmaps, if you will, to help customers on that journey. So how one size fits all is it? I mean, in the sense of, as you said, we, we wanted to make sure that we were together and on the same page and brought the unified approach of here, here's what we think are best practices here, but how, how, how much are you saying, okay, this will work for you in this industry versus other functionalities in other, other industries? Well, you know, we focused our business from an industry perspective over the last few years, right? So at one point, if you knew Oracle, we're generic across the board. Now we're very focused on individual industries, right? And you know, we started this years ago with purchasing many cloud-based applications, right? They were industry-based. And uh, you know, for most hotels, you might see on the kiosk, you know, Micros, Oracle, <laughs> those kinds of companies and so forth. So, you know, these things have, have begun for some time. And it's, you know, it's not just Oracle and, and Informatica, it's the entire ecosystem that's out there, right? And customers do have choice and that's a good thing. And the more we can provide that, the better. 
But I would say to your point, that a great example though is if you look at the, uh, so Oracle has this great website for all the kinds of reference architectures, and when you look uh, about modern cloud analytics, Informatic is there, right? So it's, it's one shared picture that we're bringing to customers, and that's not a one size fits all though, right? It, it's more of a foundation and a platform saying these are the best practices for, you, you need governance, you need integration, all the different things that IDMC brings to the table. Uh, but again, giving customers that confidence that this is a, uh, a shared vision, a joint vision, and it's vetted and tested from both Oracle and Informatic. Yeah. And it, it's not restricted to just analytics and analytics alone, right? Because, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that customers really don't want these abstract divisions, right? They don't see those abstract divisions. They just want their data, right? That's what they want. So the more that we can bring this together in a unifying fashion, you know, the better off. And, and you know, beyond analytics, you know, there's data that's, you know, that is transmitted around the world on an ongoing basis. You know, banking systems, you know, health systems and so forth. And you know, Oracle's been there through, you're probably familiar with our Golden Gate product, one of our early acquisitions, oh yeah. right? Oh so yeah. one of the really exciting things I think that's happening in Informatica talks, we've heard a lot about this at this conference, which is, you know, in order to get the AI, you need governance, you need these functions, right? And that's true not only for analytics, but for real-time data as well, right? So one of the recent things that we did with Informatica was we opened up our Golden Gate interface, so now we have the ability to manage Golden Gate metadata along with your other metadata from around the world, other vendors and so forth, in Informatica's IDMC, and we can bring that governance not just to the analytical workloads, but you know, as you may know, you know, Golden Gate is the infrastructure behind banking and governments around the world, and right. we need to bring visibility into that, not just the analytics side. Yeah, I, I think that to me is, I mean, again, like you said, for across all things, I mean, there's Cerner, there's a whole yeah. number of different verticals that Oracle has been into, and one of the things that you know, we were just chatting beforehand is that people are getting to the point where the cognitive load on understanding where is your data. So having that catalog and centralized and governance is huge because most data teams want to just talk to their data yep. to actually drive those insights. What are you seeing as, as this relationship grows, especially as we get into things like Claire and other, other places? One of the challenges I think that we kind of really attacked together was that, you know, you've got all these systems that are out there, right? And they've been built over time. Many of which have been acquired through acquisitions and you know, selling off and things like that. So you kind of have a mixture of all kinds of different stuff that's, that's out there, right? And you want to be able to bring that together on a more cohesive basis. So you know, being able to do these kind of practical arrangements, right, with Informatica and not, you know, with Informatica and not only in our own cloud and OCI, but extending that into Azure, right? I mean, we talk a lot about multi-cloud because we believe it. Right? I mean, you know, we've been the backbone of, of most operational systems around the world and still are, right? And I remember years ago, people said, well, decision support data, it's not mission critical. So we don't need the kind of controls that you have on your operational system. And it's kind of like, if you talk to any CEO today and you ask them, do you think your analytics is mission critical? They'll say, absolutely. <laughs> That's how we do surge pricing in the middle of the day. That's how we you know, deal with our competition, right? It, it is now, so you know, bringing that capability into the forefront, right, so that people not only have the ability to you know, speak human to their data, right, but they can be assured that you know, the data has the right provenance, that it has gone through the right inspections, and you know, this is an area that we long focused on, trying to make sure that only the people that are authorized to see can see. Right. Yeah. But I would say, you know, Gen AI as well, I think it's created even more demand for that metadata view, the centric view of the world, the catalog view, and not just the, the physical view of what's out there, but the, the kind of the semantic view. What does this data actually mean? What does it represent for my business? And when you think about conversational AI applications, uh, it could be as simple as when you want to create an enterprise facing app, uh, when, you, when someone else look for customer information, is your customer a business or does a person? The public models don't know that. They can't differentiate it, but when you have that rich metadata foundation that defines who is a customer, what does it mean, and you can add that to your context for inferencing, it does really ground the generational or generative AI capabilities in the enterprise information, the enterprise context of your business. And that's really a big yeah. part of our focus, right? We're not in the global LLM markets, right? So we're not producing the next version of search and getting involved in the Google micro, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah. cool, let them do that, right? 
we're on the enterprise side, right? And you know, companies are really concerned about allowing their employees and so forth, where literally the data that they've held closely is now made available for other people to build AI on. I, I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of people that woke up, you know, whether it's you know, contributing to GitHub or, or Reddit or others like that, where all of a sudden, your, what you thought was your intellectual property is now being scooped up by others. So a lot of what we do is to focus on how do we make sure that you know, we're all about the private side, right? You know, how do you make sure that not only what you're building in your models are both industry specific, which we're doing a lot of, right? Is, does it understand the keywords, the terminologies of those industries, right? Those fundamentals. And is it kept utterly and completely to yourselves, right? right. Fundamentally important, right? And, you know, and, and that's completely different from what you're hearing about you know, from a classic Gen AI point of view where you know, in search there's no concept of you know, everything's open. Yeah. But that's not how enterprises work. Right. But, but also, I mean, hallucinations are not a problem when you're doing search, necessarily. When you start to get into healthcare or retail, like you said, pricing, you want kind of the answer to come back the same pretty much every time. Yeah. And I think we were you know, riffing on this you know, earlier is the fact that, again, it's not just about the prompt either. It's about building data products and data apps. Like you talked about surge pricing and we always talk about Uber for everybody and things like that where you're building these data apps that are hugely, what do you see from your customers really going that direction and building data products and data apps? Well, you know, um, we're seeing it accelerate, right? Um, our customers have always built data products, right? I mean, you go back in this industry, right, where retail started early on, there was a company, IRI, right, Nielsen, that collected data, retail, and so forth. And, you know, these were instrumental. So now what we're seeing companies do is they're, they've always wanted to talk human to their data, right? And I think people are confused because the quantitative result that they're looking for, right, is not a function of Gen AI, right? That's the human interface, right? The quantitative result is a statistical or mathematical model from a machine learning point of view, and that will be computed, not in the Gen AI context, but within your calculation engines and the like, right? So you may get a hallucination coming from the standpoint from a text point of view, but we want to make sure that when you ask the question of how many customers do I have or this and that, your answer is still precise, right? And it's not some hallucination that took place from some other factor. Yeah. Yeah, that, that grounding concept is so critical for enterprises. And uh, so we see a lot of demand around, for example, our master data management capability, right? So we have that super high fidelity customer data, supplier data, it's high quality, it's trusted. And, and to your point, I think the, the generative piece is understanding the intention of the user, what kind of information they're looking for, and be able to route that query to the right underlying data yeah. to then do the computation, right? Get the exact answer. Um, so again, that, I, I think that's like a big area of focus for, for folks is, is uh, how do I, like I said, get the hallucinations out of it, and that also builds confidence and trust, because that's critical. It's always key for analytics, and especially true when people know there can be issues, they know there's this idea of hallucination, and, and so giving them a foundation that addresses that from the get-go is critical. Can you speak to any more specific use cases that customers are coming to you with their particular pain points or challenges that they're facing, and, and ways that your innovations have helped? Sure, I mean, you know, you'll see examples where, like, simple examples where, you know, technical products have always had documentation of some sort or another, right? And search from a documentation point of view, we know what happens, right? I mean, it is what it is and it's great, right. but we can do better, right? So, you know, putting you know, those kinds of projects into uh, a Gen AI interface where you know, it's very contained, right? And you can do it very quickly. And now, instead of the old way of doing things, you can do it through the new way, right? Searching various things like that. And what we're trying to do is to make it as easy as possible, right? And, and that's why you know, we're building the capabilities into the same infrastructure where your data lies, right? We're not the only ones you see, everybody's introducing vector to go along with their data, right? Yeah. And it's like, why would you have a separate vector store, right? So forth. And the same is true with like, everything we ask today has a context related to geography, like where are you? Are you on this floor, on that floor, where are you? So the spatial context, the relationships between people, right? I mean, what we need is answers that are quick, and if you've got this information like all over the God's green earth, right, um, in these separate little niche systems, 
you're never going to gather it together to the point where you can provide real value. So we're just trying to make it easy and we're asking customers again to say, hey, you know, we're in the news again, right? So, you know, you customers may have, you know, um, still we're there and so forth, but you know, we're back now and you know, we've always been there and we're here to help as much as we can, right? And meeting customers where they lie, right? So partnerships with Informatic and others are really important with Microsoft and others like that because at the end of the day, um, you know, we have a responsibility to our customers and to governments and to industries around the world to treat their data with the ultimate amount of respect, right? And security, right? And to help in any way we possibly can. Well, right. a fine note to end on. Neil and Rick, Perfect. thank you both so much for coming back on theCUBE. And especially, I like, I like the speak human to my data. I like that, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use that. <laughs> I'm gonna steal Perfect. it. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage and analysis.